knifed, you know, more and more, I find myself being drawn to small fixed blade knives. I find them very useful while I'm out here in the woods, around the home, and, every, and even for everyday carry. So when the company Reich offered to send me their model F815 Hornet to test, I accept it. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this small yet very capable knife, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Reich of Canada for sending me this knife, and along with another knife, a folder that I'm going to share with you in another video. I know that's unusual for me to talk about or review folders, but I think you'll appreciate this one. I really, well, all right, that's, that's a topic of another video. Anyway, so let's just make this simple. I'm going to take you in a little closer to show you the knife in detail. I'll go over its specifications, its design. We'll do some, a few demonstrations with it, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, before we take a closer look at the F18, F, before we take a closer look at the Hornet F815 from Reich, I wanted to share the sheath. Thermoplastic material, retention is good very good no rattle doesn't move around it's not going to drop out but what really makes the right sheaves stand out for their belt knives that is is this mounting system so very unique now this was on another knife that i reviewed from reich some time ago the f118-g i believe it is i'll put a link in the uh, at the end of this video if you want to go back and see that review but it's this belt clip that really is standing out for me i think this is unique in all the knife manufacturers first off you can see there's quite a bit of clearance Underneath, if you want to put a belt directly through, bring it in a little closer to your body, you can do it in that direction as well. But it is this clip up here, and I call it the clip because it is exactly that. You can see you can move it and have it grab onto your belt to put it on and off. But what's really cool is the multi-positional nature of this. There's a little lever showing up right there. Okay, if you press that, you can then turn this clip. I think it is a total of eight times. I missed that one. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm convinced you will find a position on this belt clip that will work for you for whatever your application is for this. It certainly has for me. All right, let's take the sheath out, come back to the knife. So let's do a few specifications. Overall length, 7.48 inches or 190 millimeters. Blade length, 3.35 inches or 85 millimeters. Blade thickness, 0.14 inch or 3.5 millimeters. Weight for the knife is 3.7 ounces or 105 grams. And the blade material, great choice for this knife, 14C 28N Sandvik stainless steel. And the material is orange G10 in this case. Yeah, okay, so that's the materials. Let's just talk a little bit about design. I suppose one of the things I can show you now is the stone wash finish on the blade. Okay, now let's just talk about the design. Pretty much a minimalist knife in a lot of ways. I mean, it's very lightweight, 3.7 ounces. I mean, that's pretty good when you think about it. However, you can, you are right when you look at this and say, Mark, there's not a whole lot of grip there for your XL hands, and you're right. But considering that this is not a primary bushcraft knife, this is not something I'll do a lot of carving with. This is the knife that you grab when you just want a small knife for doing small tasks with, which I'll talk about my experiences in a few moments' time. So I don't mind that it's a little small on my hand. It's still very comfortable. I like that it's been lightened here and taken some of the weight away. It's really, there is no need for additional weight on this knife. Now, yes, this is G10 handles. They're not very big. Here's a feature about the handles I want to show. Mm -hmm. I did not expect. Do you see the thumb scallops right up here? Both sides, obviously. Are they functional? Yeah, actually they are. Now, I don't know with scales that thin that it was necessary to have those scallops, but they are a place, a point of index. It lets me know when my thumb is in the right place without having to look at it. I can feel my hand working right there. And this is comfortable to hold in this position as well as in this position. Something you don't get a lot from a lot of small knives. Now, blade design. It is a saber grind, fairly high, not a really high saber grind, but higher than a lot are. It does have an unsharpened wedge down here, and it is of the harpoon style. The tip is 
uh, you know, it's strong enough, I guess is the best way to say it. It's not overly strong, but this isn't meant for prime. This is not a primary survival knife. Again, this is a knife that you do a lot of the smaller tacks are, which require, oftentimes, require a fine tip to do the detail work. Okay, so that harpoon style, um, is it helpful? It doesn't hurt. It's not really a traction for my thumb so much, again, as an index, a place to put my thumb when I'm pressing down on it. Can I get up close on the edge and do a little feather sticking? Yep, I can. I certainly can, but it's not the knife that I would choose to do that with right off the top. By the way, the scales are removable if you want to. You can use an Allen key or two Allen keys, one to each side, of course, to get this to take these off, but uh, I don't feel the need to it. And you could put a little lanyard on because the holes through are fairly big. I don't know if I get full-size paracord on there, but certainly smaller paracord or other types of cord you could get through there. Okay, so that's a look at the specs and the design of this knife. Let's just talk about my experiences with it. All right, let's talk about my experiences using the F815 Hornet from Reich. So I've had this now for about six weeks. I've been using it at home a lot. I've been carrying it out to the woods, not as my primary cutting tool, but either both as a backup as well as an alternative tool for smaller tasks when a big knife just doesn't, uh, you know, fit the bill, so to speak. In fact, that's the way I like to pair this small knife with a big knife. So this is the one you'll use for all the smaller tasks, if that makes sense. Big knife, maybe for wood processing. But uh, yeah, this makes a lot of sense if you're carrying a big knife that you have a small knife along with you. So that's why I've been carrying it in the woods. Now, at home, the uses I've been putting it through, all the things you might expect in opening, mail, boxes, things like that, and a lot of food preparation. And that's the task I like to use my knives that I'm testing for as long as appropriate. I mean, great big knives don't... Uh, work so well in the kitchen, but a small knife like this, sure, why not? Now, I have mentioned that I carry this as an everyday carry knife. Let's just put that into perspective because I think this is important. I mentioned this in another video and somebody challenged me on this to say, is it legal for you to carry a knife like this on an everyday carry out in public? I can't answer that for you. I can only answer that for me. So you'll need to check with your local laws and bylaws to see if in fact it is legal for you to carry a fixed blade knife this length and all those other things with you. I'll tell you, no, I don't carry this when I go out in public because one, I've already always have a folder with me, so I don't feel the need to carry this knife. And you know, if I took this to the grocery store, to the restaurant or some other place and hauled it out for some tasks like peeling an apple, you know it's gonna raise eyebrows and probably phone calls into the place. So there's no need for me to do that when those tasks are all covered off by a fixed blade knife. However, Around the house, it's everyday carry. I can use it there and not feel like uh, I have to worry about it being there. So that's the type of uses I've been putting it for through. Now, as far as woods use, I've been using it for food preparation here at my campsite. Um, yeah, that's about the length of it. I have done some carving with it because that tip is fine enough to do the carving with. So if you've got a big knife and it's a little awkward, then a small knife like this really does come into its own and that's where you you want to use it, uh, there, it, it works really well. However, it's not something I would do a lot of feather sticking with, for instance, as I mentioned earlier. While it is comfortable, not for an extended period of time, it's really not designed for that purpose. Now, here's the one thing I'll say about it that is a bit of a downside. It's not something that can't be fixed, but it's not something that comes the way maybe you would like it to. The spine is not 90 degrees. I think it may have been when it was first put through the uh, production, but when they stone washed it, it uh, yeah, it's rounded off. You can't scrape a ferrocerium rod or fat wood or anything else with that. Easy enough to fix though. Very easy to fix that with a file or even a stone. I could fix that up right away and I may do that. Well, well um, I'm not quite sure. One of the things I do like about it, it's very comfortable up here for your thumb. So if you are carving, then yeah, you could lay your finger up here without any concerns of it becoming uncomfortable over time. Okay, 
So those are how my experiences with this knife. I really like it. It is a small knife compared to a lot of the other knives that I reviewed and usually do carry it when I'm out here in the woods, but it is one I'm gonna to continue to bring with me when I carry a big knife so I can have this as the companion knife to the big one. Ah, I'll put all the specifications as well as the links to where you can take a look at this knife if you're interested in the video description below. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.